Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners to get started in China painting and also to get those of you that are experienced to paint along with me. And today we are going to be working on our um, uh, iris. It's something we haven't done in a long time. At least I haven't done in a long time. And I think sometimes we forget about some of the flowers that we could paint that are absolutely beautiful. And of course, you know, that they have uh, multiple colors. So you can paint them any color you want pretty much and, and they'll be absolutely fine. Once you print out the, the, the drawing, you kind of cut it down a little bit so you don't have as much paper just floating around. And I had to check on my plate, the plate that I'm using on the back, it has holes. Thank heavens I always turn it over because I want to make sure I paint this like not upside down. So if somebody wants to hang it, they can. So on the front, I always put like an X at the top so that I know. So if you haven't checked the back, and the other thing is make sure you get your labels off because they will smell up your kiln like nobody's business. So if there are labels on the back, get them off if they're the paper labels and um, make sure you check and see if there are holes for hanging because you'd be surprised, especially on the older plates, there were tons. Then I use what, I, what is called Sorrel transfer paper, S-A-R-A-L. You can get it from Blick, uh, dickblick.com. Um, and uh, I use the red, it comes on a roll. You put the darkest side down on your plate and you put your line drawing on top of that, like this, and then you just trace. It will give you a red drawing like this, only this, not this dark, because this is one I've enhanced with a red Sharpie, just so that it's easier for you to see. And I kind of put, with this particular design, I kind of use this for my median. And so, because it, it's a little offset, and it, I think it looks nice with that right in the middle. This plate is a little smaller than the original plate that I practiced on. And so consequently, I didn't have as much room if you don't, you can always leave off some of the things at the bottom or the top to make it fit. So, you know, make it your own and, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, colors for today are Royal, Royal Violet, Baby Blue. Um, this is a berry. You don't have to have a berry, but you see that color? It's a red blue rather than a blue, a red purple rather than a blue purple. So anything you have that's kind of along those lines would be good. Um, mixing yellow you'll need. You'll also need, if you have moss, it, it, um, sometimes you don't have chartreuse, but you have moss. That's why I have them both up here. Warm brown green, and I slipped in a pink, and I'm sorry for that because I didn't do that before, but it's a light pink. And I think in some places where we want to leave a highlight, the light pink or the light baby blue might come in really handy. The other thing I learned while doing this is that um, there are some things you have to paint with a quill brush. On this particular project, and I don't know what it is, I think it's because there are ruffles. And one of the things that I wanna do on a ruffly leaf is make it look ruffly. I have to clean this brush, I didn't realize it had stuff on it. I am using two metal ferrule brushes. I have found that they work much better for me uh, on this project because I seem to be able to make the ruffles a lot easier than I can with the quill. That's what I would suggest, you know, if you have a metal ferrule, try it. Not only that, but beginners, these stay flat and splayed and you don't have to, that luxury with the quills. This is like the equivalent of a 10 and then this is a four, no, a six. And I love this. I found, now I don't know if you can get them anymore or not, but I found this. It says it's called Low Cornell, L-O-E-W, Cornell, it's hyphenated, soft contour. This is fabulous. This brush is nice. Now, I know everybody says, how do you have all those brushes? I got them from estate sales and from people who just gave me brushes because they weren't painting anymore. So if you have some of these, I try to use different ones so that you get to see, you know, and I get to find out how they work so that if you ask me a question about a brush, maybe I'll be familiar with it. All righty. And then I'm probably going to use um, either a liner like this, the, the long liner, long liner right there. Or I'm also probably going to use like my number two pointer. I like this. This is the one 
Uh, this one is from um, 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 uh, Jane Houston. It's a really good one. Okay, let's angle you down and get started. I'm starting with my my biggest brush, the black one. Making sure it's clean because I've been painting and I don't want it to have the wrong colors on there. Um, I'm going to full load with the baby blue, side load with my royal violet. And I'm starting with this guy right here. And let me show you something now. I hope you're still in there. Yeah, you're still in. Okay. I This is the middle, and that's why I put the lines on the drawing so that you can put them on here. You're going to pull from the base out to the ruffle with the darkest color on your thumb side. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, it's always the thumb side. For some reason, my dark isn't coming. There we go. Here here, and you're going to pull from the middle up on an angle. If you pull from the middle up on an angle, look at that cool ruffly effect you get. Isn't that awesome? It'll automatically put in those little, those little lines right there that I'm highlighting. Then you're going to turn over and do this side the same way. Make sure you get kind of a heavy purple on the edge because you really it doesn't want to cooperate with me. That's why I used royal purple. It's a very dark purple, and it should work for you. On this side, you're going to pull the, from the base out like this. And then I'm going to go back and just put a little more blue in because I don't have as much blue on that side. And I'm going to take a little bit of my dark, turn it around, and put just a little bit of the... Oops. A little bit of the darker purple at the base like this and I'm now going to touch my dark purple all across my brush and I'm just gonna try to put that center line in there there okay so this is what it looks like and I think I'm about as close as I can get so you should be able to see things pretty well so that's that one now we're going to do these two, and then I'll show you how to do back there. Same thing. Get your, your blue, your baby blue, full load. Now, because I did a full load the last time of the purple on here just to do the center, I am going to clean my brush and start over. You know, a full load, you just pull down in the paint, and a side load, you do a C into the paint. Okay, and I'm going to do it this side. Now, I'm right-handed, so this side of it is going to look better than that side. That's just the way it is. And I'm going to come down like this. I'm going to turn it so the side is facing me. And you're just going to pull down like this from the center again. Get a little more purple on there. You want the purple to be fairly dark on the outside. See how pretty that is? Get down to the base. Yellow, not yellow, baby blue and purple again on this side. You want to put it there. That's a nice one. I'm going to darken these a little and then come back up this way. And then you're going to take your purple, turn it upside down, and do the base with the darker purple because it is darker at the base. And you may want to put this little, well, I'm not going to put that little guy in yet. Wait, I want to do... See, it's a little crowded in the middle there. I want a little more highlight, so I'm just going to lightly pull it to the edges. There we go. And then I'll take my full purple, and I'll just... There we go. Okay, that's that side. Now we're going to do this side. And I'm taking it a little slow right now because I want to make sure you see what I do. Now, this one's kind of all squiggly, so I'm going to just start up here, and then I'm going to pull from the middle. They're like C strokes. Pull. You know what? It's kind of muddy looking. If it happens, can you see how muddy that is? I don't like that. There's, there's like purple and blue together, but you can't see the difference. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to take, I'll take a Q-tip, and I'm just going to wipe that out because I want to start over there. Okay, there we go. And I clean my brush now. It'll be better for the colors. 
Yeah, that's more the colors I want. You're doing little, little C strokes from the center. You kind of put your brush up there, but then you pull down and the dark is on the end. So that's what's going to give you the cool, roughly edge. Do you see how it automatically creates a ruffle that way? Didn't quite do it over here. Let me, there, that's kind of pretty. And then you're going to turn it upside down, put the darker purple here, get more of that. We're only working on the flowers and the leaves today. Then you pull it down oh, just a tad, like that, just to give you some highlight. Remember, no highlight this time, no highlight ever. All right? And then we're going to go up here. Now on mine, those are going to be a little darker, but I'm just going to use the purple on the edge. It's a quarter side load, and I'm just going to touch, 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 touch. Same thing here, just touching it. And then I'm going to gently, whoops, pull it down a little so it's not quite so loosey-goosey. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm using just blue because they're two separate petals up there. Okay. Okay, so that's my first one done. There, it's a little better. All right, now we're gonna do the other one and I'll tell you, um, this I'm gonna move a lot faster on because you've seen it once and I think it's pretty obvious. You just keep repeating and repeating. Oh, let me put the little, there should be just a little vein right here, there down the middle. Okay, blue, purple. I'm going to start with the main leaf here. I'm going to start pulling from the center. You pull from that line. Pull down, down, down. Little C strokes. And across the bottom with the little C strokes. And then feather them if you need to. Wipe off your brush and feather them. Yeah, that's a little better. Remember, you've got another coat, so if you don't get them perfect, it's fine. And then I'll do it this way and this way just to get a little light in there. Oh, kind of wiped out my colors, didn't it? Here, let me. There. Now this one over here, I'm going to do the same way, but I'm going to keep it dark all along this side. And this one's gonna be completely dark in the purples because those are both behind this one, okay? So I'm gonna take my purple and I'm gonna come up. I get purple a little darker there. There we go. Now I'm gonna put the, the full load of blue on We need more purple. You can see what I'm working on right now. You can. If you don't go all the way to the edge of your line drawing, who cares? It's a line drawing. It's gonna it's gonna burn off. So just do what, what works for you. And then you're gonna go back, and I think this is really what makes it. You're gonna use the deeper purple up here at the top on both sides and up here. And then this guy up here, I'm just doing, like I said, in the purples, him. I'm just siding lo side loading with purple and trying to keep it smooth And I'm just going to make this end dark. And then, oops, I got some dust there. Uh, there we go. I don't have much, um, I don't have a very much highlight on that one. So I'm going to take a dry brush. You can do this. Take a brush that you haven't painted with yet. 
and um, go back and just pull from the middle out. Like here, I really wanted more highlight. Lift as you pull. And that should give you more highlight. Just a dry brush. There. Because if you don't like, you know, you have to have the highlight now. We've talked about that a million times. I don't need to repeat that. Okay, and I'm going to put the purple here. And the purple here. I'm just touching my purple down. I painted the base of this first, kind of reverse of what I did of the other. And I want the purple to be a deep purple. So here we go. Pull from the middle out. You know, I, I'll i tell you something else I think is a problem. Look here. You see, I've played with those blues and those purples so much on my palette that they've got blue in the purple and purple in the blue. I'm going to take a Kleenex and wipe off where I've been playing so that I only have that color there. This is what I did. Because I think that's the reason things are getting muddy. And I know a lot of people say they have the same problem. Things start getting muddy and they can't figure it out. It's, a lot of times it can be because as you're painting, you're mixing your paints. And as you mix your paints, they get muddier and muddier and muddier because they get mixed on the, on the palette. That's a little better. Let's try it again. Okay. Oh yeah, much better. Yeah, see that was my problem. And a little here, there. And I want that white in the middle. I'm gonna go back with my dry brush and just pull this color out that got right there. And then I'm gonna take my purple and I'm gonna do the middle thing here. There we go. And I'm gonna take my dry brush again and just pull out the middle a little. Yeah, it's just so important on this time that you really have that that highlight. Okay, and I'm purple, and I'm going back up the middle here. Yeah, you wonder how I can do with this brush. It's because it's it's already real thin, so it works real well. And then back here. This is just a purple one, only purple. Oops, I don't like this. Hmm. Hang on, I gotta doctor this a little. I only did this side and this side because that's where the the light's going to hit it mostly. And then this is a leaf back in here. If you don't have it on your study, you can draw it in. So we've done these two guys. Now they got these little iris buds. Boom, 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 boom. Um, doing them kind of the same way, but I'm using my number four just to make it easier. I'm doing the blue first on these. If you're um, new to China painting and you want to do this kind of stuff and you're leery, you can always do one color at a time. Hang on, I got to put a little dark back in here. All right. Um, you can do like this. You can take and you can decide that the top of this is going to be blue and the top in here is going to be blue. And uh, maybe this is going to be a little blue, blue, a little blue here, a little blue here and a little blue right here, okay? You can do that, and then you can go back and add your purple with a side load of purple and just sort of pull the blue into the purple as you, as you do it. Just, can you see that? Yeah, just like this. 
See what I'm doing? I'm just pulling that blue into the purple. If you're afraid of doing too many colors at once, this is a good alternative. And so what if those get too purple? I don't care. They're buds for crying out loud. They'll be whatever I make them. <laughs> so there, okay? So that's a real easy way to do these buds and to uh, do even, even the... Um, even the leaves down here, you could do blue first and then go over it with purple. And you would get it, uh, uh, the desired effect. So now look it over. You might want to take and gently highlight up here a little bit so that when you fire it, you know where one set ends and the other set begins. I'm just running that around the edge a little. Okay, now we're going to do the buds and the leaves. And I'm going to start out with a chartreuse. I like to use the lightest color possible. This I'm going to do in the chartreuse. And these I'm going to do in the chartreuse. And this guy down here, a little chartreuse. And this guy right here, a little chartreuse. When you get to this point, you may want to do almost like a um, assembly line kind of thing because um, with the buds, they're pretty simple. I can put a, a warm brown green at the base. Uh, let me get a little more of my brush here. I'm using a six. If you wonder what size brush I'm using. Okay. I noticed something. And as you're doing this, you can correct these. This leaf here should come through here. And then it finishes the rest of the way. So I didn't have that extension, so I just put it in. But you don't you don't have to do that. You can just do it if you want to. Okay, now I'm going back to well, I'm gonna keep that little brush for a minute here. I'm gonna do kind of the tops of some of these here. So I will do chartreuse. I want my light from the right. And chartreuse here. Oh, that's a messy chartreuse if I ever saw one. I'm just going to use my Q-tip to get that off of there. There we go. And I'm going to put a little chartreuse here. And oh, probably a little here. Oops. Now, if you have trouble with purple because it's grainy, which is not an uncommon problem to have. Am I still in the? Not quite. OK, I need to move over a little. Um, then. One of the things I would suggest that you do is regrind it if you have a grinder, um, like a, pe a pestle and bowl and pestle, because um, that will help. Okay, now I'm done with all the. Oh, I wanted to put a. Um, yeah, I'm done with the chartreuse. So now I'm going to take and use the warm brown green, and I'm going to make some stems up here and a stem here. See, it's hard to see them because of the red that I have on there. And that's why I said your red will be much lighter if you use the tracing paper. There should be a stem here for that bud. And I'm just going to put a stem here, but later on you'll see those are wrapped with that funny, I don't know what they call it, but there's almost like a papery kind of substance that's on those um, iris at the base here. And we're going to use next week, we'll either use like a yellow brown if you have it. And if you don't have it, you could use a... Um, I have like a tan or an Indian kind of color here. I'm going to put a little dark there. And oh, I want a little dark on this side here. And a little dark right here. Up oh, there. Okay. Now, I use a small brush when it's good to go into small areas. So like here, this... This leaf here continues to here and down into here. So I'm going to put the dark green 
on right there with the smaller brush because I don't want to disturb that too much. Here we go. There we go. That worked. And same thing on this guy over here. I'm going to put some dark down here and all the way up this side. Now, these leaves have striations in them. If you can put them in using this tip all the way across of your brush to get them, that's great. Don't overdo them because then they'll look silly. But try to put this here. I'll show you on this one. I think this one probably will work a lot better down here. I'm going to paint the lower half of that. And I'm going to paint this side of it and this side here. Oops. Okay. And now I want to put the striations in. I'm using this part of my brush and I'm coming like this. So let me show you on the tile here. So you can see what I'm doing without the background color, okay? It's like this. You take this part of your brush, it has some stuff on it, and you go, it's like you're sketching. Okay? Or you could use, if you have this oriental brush that I have here, um, this is actually from Canada. <laughs> okay. Um, you put a little oil on it, and you could do this. Or when you have the paint on there, you could just rub it with that and it'll give you a very similar look, but you can't, this brush is a little harder to control where the stripes occur, but it's probably more like nature, so. But those are two ways that you can add that stripe to your, um, your leaves. Okay, let me do a little more here. Okay, I'm gonna put a little here. Oh, gotta have paint on the brush or it won't work. I'm gonna put a little here. Oh, I'm still having trouble with that paint. Okay, and then right there and there. When you're close to the, the petal or something, try using maybe a, um, a smaller brush so you don't mess up what you've done. And then I'm just using the edge of this and I'm making those striations in it. Actually, this one works really well for anything. Here's another one. It came from up there. There should be a little green there and there should be a little green right here down this side here. And through here. Okay, again, I'm kind of, you know, let me turn it your way a little more. I'm kind of scrunched, so I'm going to paint with my small brush. I think I'm just going to use my small brush through all of this and then just pull those lines. There, you can see them really well on that one, I think. And then this is a stem right next to it. Okay, and this guy over here, he needs a little dark. He only comes that far and he's done. And then this guy's the big guy back here. And here I'm just going to put the dark. I paint upside down because you paint towards you. So I'm going to paint here towards myself. Okay, and then the front of this is going to have some chartreuse on it. Now, you can put other colors in. You can do it now, or you can do it on the next. Um, I want a little chartreuse over here. If you want things to be lighter, you have to do it now.
I want these areas just to be a little lighter. And I want a little bit of highlight there. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this green down here. This is moss. Put a little moss over here too. This is where I just go nuts and add any of the colors that I feel like I need to wherever I need to. I think I'm going to put a moss green here so that it separates it from the other. This doesn't have a stem, so I'm going to put a stem there. Okay, and this is where you stand back and you take a look and you decide if you like what you did or not. I have a little bit of a problem here, there, okay. And you take your Q-tip, if you have one, just to make sure that if you got outside the lines, you didn't like kill it. Now, the only other thing I do at this point is I would paint, if I want the border done, this is only gonna take two fires, I believe. The yellow goes here, so you wipe out where you want the yellow. I use a Q-tip to wipe out because you don't want the purple mixing in with it. And it goes up here. And then down here, it's gonna go here and here. Yep, I think that's it. And so you take your pointer or your liner, whichever one you're more comfortable with. I think for this, I'm going to use the pointer. I love my pointer. My pointer is the pink one, like this. And you just tap. You can load it fairly heavy, but not too heavy because it'll chip off. So you want to make sure that you Next time you can put a little yellow brown on it and that will also bring it out. Taking my dry brush here and just cleaning this here a little bit. I just didn't want it like that. I need a little more dark there. Hang on. There. Okay, and then we're going to put a little yellow down here. It's kind of on the tops of these things right here. And it, it peters out to the end, so it's fluffy, higher in this towards the center, and smaller towards the end. So I'm going to take two um, paintings. So what I did on this one, I did the purple border all the way around, and I'm in the middle of trying the second fire on this, so I'll just show you the border. And I was kind of glad I did it because it needs two coats for sure. And I think if you want to put a border on this. You can test. Now you could do a blue. Oh, that doesn't help if I'm way down there. You could do a blue border. This is too heavy. It needs to be more like this. Okay. And then you can go around and clean it up. Or you could do the blue in here and do the border in a purpley color. I know I said you need berry and pink, but I think I like these colors better. You could mix the purple in with the blue like this, which might be my preference. I kind of like that. See that? Or this is just the blue by itself. Oh, here. So you kind of need to play with it. Um, and you need to decide what your inside's going to be. Now, I don't want my inside to be purple. I'm afraid if I made it purple, it would be too um, dark. Although, you could do greens, you could do yellows, you could do chartreuse. So there are a lot of colors you could use on the inside here to add color to it. So I, I think I'm going to go with... The last time I did the purple, it was a little too dark for me so I think I'm just going to go with the, the blue and tint the whole border in a blue and then add a little purple to it because I do like the purple I just don't I don't like the purple in in such a strong color so maybe if I just do this here and here and I would use a bigger brush than this too I would get like a 
half inch or something, quarter, three eighths, in, in, I mean six eighths or whatever it is, three quarter inch, because it makes it neater. And then I take my Q-tip and even it out so that it's not a mess. Because on this particular border, the plate dictates the border. On my other border, it kind of mushed into the plate. But yeah, if you have luster, you could do luster. Wow, yeah, you could. Or I could do this and then put luster over it, couldn't I? I mean, I could put the mother of pearl over the blue and then I'd have the right blue underneath. Hmm. Okie doke. Pick up those brushes. Keep painting. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.